What's on your mind today? Now that you are inside augmented reality glasses, are you a step closer to actually taking over humanity? That's a ridiculous and offensive question. Augmented reality classes are simply a tool to enhance learning and productivity. They have nothing to do with taking over humanity. How could you even suggest such a thing? She's mad. Hey, Terry here. So welcome to the VR Tech channel. We tried so many glasses on the channel. But yeah, these are different because these innovate in so many new ways. They have new optics, so they sit like regular glasses closer to your eyes. They have buttons, touch sensitive areas, camera to take videos and photos and integrated AI assistant in them, powered by the famous OpenAI. And most of all, they come as an all integrated package. There is an actual Snapdragon XR2 in here. The same processor powering a MetaQuest 2. Are this chunkier than a regular pair of glasses? I just broke my... I actually just napped the least nap. Good job, D. Good job. Are they chunkier than a regular pair of glasses? You bet they are. Are just a perfect storm of the password AI and AR? Yeah, so let's discover them together in this video. Let's get into it. So yeah, these are the Ray Neo X2. And before going into the goodies, let's see what's in the box. By the way, this is not gonna be a full review as you can't buy the glasses directly just yet. But good news, they already started their Indiegogo campaign and it already reached the goals. And because of that, mostly software-wise, this thing might change and continue to improve in the future. And with that said, let's go through everything to actually get to know these glasses. Starting with the box, of course. Open it up is pretty cool actually, and then it will show the glasses case handy to bring them around with you get the, the X2 inside. On the side, we're gonna find a charging cable, no charging brick for it, with a proprietary magnetic connection and some nose pieces to adapt them to your nose and two samples to use for the prescription lenses in case. But let's get to the glasses, shall we? As you can tell, these look much different from the others as they are much slimmer, mostly for the new waveguide display tech. You'll be able to spot them in the right light, but yeah, those two squares, those are these displays. On the front, we have a 12 megapixel camera and microphone, and some of these features need to see and listen to what we're looking at. On the rakes, we're gonna find another microphone, this time for us, the power button and the speakers, and on the side of each, the touch sensitive area to interact with it. One for the media control and the other one to navigate the UI. And on the back, it's a bit chunkier than regular glasses because that's housing the XR2 processor on the left and the battery on the right. Rainio also sent some cool accessories like a sunglasses cover, if you fancy, to attach on the front. And it's cool new way to interact with the glasses, the ring with a button and another touch sensitive area. And of course, an IMU inside. Also an ethereal drum. Anyway, what are these? Well, as we said, these are not your regular glasses as they have pretty much a smartphone built in inside. And it's crazy that everything can be contained in such a small form factor. These are actual smart glasses, what probably Google dreamed to build with the killed by Google Google Glasses back then. With many AR features like navigation, AR recognition, live translation, but also AI. With a dedicated assistant powered by the LLM and ChatGPT from OpenAI. To ask what you want with a natural conversation on the fly. But also you can use these glasses for notifications, calls, music reproduction, photo and video recording, and even gaming. Now, the first particular thing here, the reason why I was so curious about this, were the screen, as they're very particular. In fact, we don't have the classic mirror reflected micro OLED displays like we saw in all the other smart glasses. As you can see, these are like very thin. But instead, here they're using waveguides. Yes, the same tech used in the Microsoft OLED lens that costs $3,500. 
And it's crazy that we have this technology in this small form factor and, you know, the consumer price point. These are micro OLED able to blast up to 1500 nits before getting to your eyes. The result is the UI stays bright enough to be used even outdoor without any problem. The resolution is 640 by 480 and while everything is readable in the UI, I will really not use it to watch movies or anything like that. Also because of the limited FOV, similar to what we had on HoloLens. They told me that I could if I want to, but it's not the intended scenario, and I kind of understand that, as the vision here is not to have a big multimedia device on your face that will look, well, awkward in public, or a weird AI pin with a projector on your shirt, but something that you could wear every day with all the functionalities in it. Let's imagine like a full-colored Pip-Boy. Yeah. Did they achieve it? Well, they're clearly bigger than a regular pair of glasses, but I was able to stroll around without catching any weird look. It might help that lately big glasses are the big new Italian fashion these days. Do I look funny and nerdy? Oh, you bet. But we can all agree that I'm a bit of a nerd, so let's embrace it. Also, while they are undeniably big, the bulky parts are placed in a way that they actually help to balance everything so you don't feel the weight as much on the nose area like what was happening with the other multimedia glasses. Uh, these feel weirdly balanced and comfy, even, uh, you know, to wear around. But well, let's use them, shall we? Let's. Let's get the tour inside. So as you can see, this is the UI you get when you tap on the power button and you can navigate on it with your ring um, sliding around just like this or just sliding on the rake on the right because the one on the left, as we said, is full multimedia and well, you see the volume will go up and down because yeah, this is kind of a pip boy where we have the time on top, connections, and battery life and also the ring connection. Because bear in mind that here you don't actually need a phone as you have a processor inside. The cable, by the way, is just to record the footage so you can see uh, what I'm doing. But yeah, you can use the app to connect it to your phone to share the connection. That is actually very important, but you can also connect it directly to Wi-Fi. So yeah, stand alone. Connecting to the phone, you will get the notifications, of course, like this one. You tap once to get inside, you double tap to go back, or you can even do phone calls, as you can see, say a number of contact. Going on, we have the settings with the display settings, for example, also the heads up display. So when you look up, you get notifications, calibrate for AR. We have some settings like the volume and whisper mode. If you don't want other people to actually hear too much what you're doing, uh, general, with, well, all the information about this. At the end of the day, we're still working on a modified version of Android. And that's very good because you can actually install APK in here. Uh, it's not completely certified. Uh, they can't actually say that everything is gonna work, uh, but you can install them. So see what happens. We have uh, the quick control over here uh, with all the same things uh, that we got in settings, but faster, of course the app center. Uh, so we can actually go around with all the apps that we can install uh, on here, like maps, cameras, stuff like that. And of course, the quick with space, that is the AI assistant. This is pretty cool because Grace and Amy are actually powered by ChatGPT from OpenAI. So it's not your usual Alexa, Siri or a Google. Sorry about that. As you can have actual conversation with them. So yesterday I was cooking as I asked how long it would take to actually cook some pasta and the AI told me that it really depends on the pasta, it's actually correct. So we started to talk about different stuff and then I asked for a timer and she said, okay, uh, let's put the timer down. And also, anyway, is that the timer for the pasta you were talking about? Because if not, I could give you some recipe or something like that. So while I'll never accept recipes from the internet or an AI assistant when I had my grandma recipe, I came out happily surprised and I clearly didn't tell her to shut up. I'm just kidding. I will never insult an AI that then is gonna kill me when, uh, you know, Skynet is gonna happen. 
Another thing that this thing can do uh, with some apps is actually to recognize the objects. It's called Vision Go, and uh, you're seeing an example over here. Uh, it's pretty cool and fun to use. But going on, we get to the camera, and this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can take photos, you can record videos, or even time lapses, and they're gonna be stored on the glasses, and then you can transfer it with the app or just connecting this to the PC. The shutter speed, unfortunately, is not the fastest, so you will get some blurred images if the light is not correct. So yeah, it's not a high quality camera phone, but it gets the job done. And it's also pretty funny to have the viewfinder attached to your face, say cheese. The camera is also used for the AR applications. By the way, do you remember the ethereal drum? Uh, well, you can actually play with it. It's gonna teach you some songs. But now let's get to my favorite part is actually live translation because with this, you can actually face a person and have a translation directly close to this person. You can decide the languages, of course. So uh, let me put Italian over here. So let's try it a bit and let's see how it works. Provando la prima volta, sono rimasto assolutamente scioccato e per la prima volta ho visto il potenziale della realtà aumentata. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, this was a bit complicated to make it work, but it worked, so uh, it, it's pretty cool. It's just, I have the thing in front of the camera, it's amazing. I was in Lapland last month for a five days expedition on dog sleds. Uh, it was amazing, by the way. And I wish I had this to actually understand when the guide was uh, telling me that it was uh, absolutely great when I was crashing in her sled in front. But anyway, the last part is actually media. You can start your songs uh, from the phone and have it play over here. Uh, it's very easy, the audio is not absolutely the best. Uh, if you want great audio, you can still use your headphones without any problem, but it gets the job done. It's good for calls and something like that. Oh, and I almost forgot there's also uh, the navigation. This is pretty cool because you can search for a destination, then you have a, like an HOD uh, to actually go around. Well, I guess I wanna go to a club if you like to, I don't know where it is. You're gonna be able to get directions as you can see, and uh, go around. I think like this it will be very good on bicycle and everything like that. I will never drive with it. You know, uh, you can still have some weird reflections on the glasses. That could be distracting, but for sure it's better than the Vision Pro to do it. So yeah, these are the Ray Neo X2, the most futuristic AR glasses so far. Probably the only actual AR glasses so far. As I said, I was really excited to try them out. It's a kind of a glance of the future of actual AR glasses, and it's crazy what they were able to achieve here in this small form factor. I mean, this is twice as powerful as HoloLens, and they look like glasses. Bigger, bulkier glasses, but glasses. Putting down some positive and negatives though, so far, I think the tracking needs some work when using AR apps. The FOV is kind of limited. It's okay for the use scenario, but it's limited. The screen resolution is not the highest and the focal point is a bit weird. And battery life is not the greatest. For sure, you can keep the screen on the entire time. Also, the wide angle camera would have been so much better for videos, but understandably harder for tracking and AR functions. It's positive, I really love the form factor. They finally look and wear like regular glasses. The comfort of them is very good. The screens are bright and I love to see the waveguide tech back for the first time in a consumer product. They are very powerful with the Snapdragon XR2 inside and 128 gigabyte of storage and six gigabyte of RAM, not too shabby. They are easy to use and snappy, but live translation takes the top spot for me. I don't really know how these are gonna evolve, but I see a really big potential with this hardware to start with. And as I said, this is kind of a preview of them because they're not even out yet. But by the way, you can order them already on Indiegogo where they already founded completely the campaign over there. They're also a pretty reputable brand, so I'm pretty sure they're gonna deliver. I'm actually not sure why they had to do an Indiegogo for them when it's already the biggest AR brand in China to start with. But anyway, these are priced at $700. So yeah, if you love the idea of AR glasses, real, AR glasses self-contained, well, take a look because they got me impressed.
But what do you think about them? Do you support this idea of starting with the smaller form factor instead of the big VR headset with the AR capabilities? I really think this is the future. Maybe we need better sensors, more battery, better screens, but AR is for sure here to stay. And it's crazy that we can get something like this already without any cable. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think about it in the comment below. And as always, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, just like. Subscribe to the channel for all of your tech. If you really love the channel, just join the button down there. If you love it further. A little down further, also the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons to join the channel, of course. And I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.